So guys, I'm pretty happy to bring you this one today. This is my review of the Adidas Adizero Adios 8. Let's get into it. Alright guys, this video is a collaboration between me and Roadrunner Sports. Roadrunner Sports was good enough to send me the Adios 8 for the purpose of review. However, they're not going to get a chance to see this video before you do, and all the thoughts and opinions are mine. With that said, let's get into it. And look, I've got to be honest with you. I'm pretty happy to bring you this review because I've got a lot of good things to say about it. It's a solid shoe, and let's get started right off with price because that is a pretty big element of it being so good. The Adios 8 will cost you $130. And at least for me, I think this shoe represents incredible value. I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of value and performance out of this shoe. Now the Adidas Adios 8 is a fast shoe, it's a race shoe, it's a fast workout type of shoe, which is totally fine, we do buy shoes for specific things, but I think the real value of this shoe is seen in that it's going to work for a lot of people. That don't necessarily run at the fastest paces. Now the Adios 8 is a neutral shoe and it does fit true to size. I know a lot of times in the past you've had to size up half a size. That is not the case in this shoe. This fit me like a dream. And while we're talking about fit, I did have a lot of room in my forefoot. Now my feet do run on the narrower side and this is a race day shoe. So it is going to feel a little more snug than let's say your average daily trainer. But my feet were very comfortable. And I don't want to say that my feet could splay out. You know, it's not like an ultra shoe, but they were comfortable. It was a very comfortable race shoe feeling. Unlike some other race shoes that I've used where it feels like I need to kind of shoehorn my foot into it. I think the stack height and drop is going to be pretty welcoming for a lot of runners too. We have 28 millimeters in the heel, 20 millimeters in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop. And yes, I know sometimes we hear 28 and 20 and we think, at least nowadays, we think that's a pretty low stack height. Is that shoe going to be protective enough? And hold on, we'll talk about that in just a second. Now Adidas is claiming that a US men's size 9 would tip the scale at 7 ounces or 198 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 13, it tips the scale at 9.6 ounces or 273 grams. So this shoe is light, it feels light, and that lightness is really appreciated when you start picking up the pace. Okay, let's, let's talk about materials. Let's start at the top and work our way down. And you can see this heel collar is just super thin. There is no padding immediately on the top. Then we come down and we do have these bolsters that run along the side and I did find that they gave my heel just, you know, a nice cup. They held it in place quite well. Now the heel counter is quite rigid. It's it's very small. It's like that wide. You can see how far my fingers are apart, but that did the job. Oh, and this is unlikely going to happen to you, but when I got this pair of Adios 8, the heel counter in the back, the top of it had kind of folded over. So when I put my foot in for the first time, I could feel something digging into the back of my heel. I mean, it was impossible to run with a shoe with that thing digging into the back of your heel, but when I was able to get my finger behind the material and kind of move that little piece of plastic, that little heel counter, move it back pointing up in the right direction. And once I did that, it kind of just snapped back into place and I haven't had any issues running in the shoe. So just in case that is something that happens, that's how you fix it. The inside little bit of material that's not sewn down, so you are able to get your finger in and just kind of manipulate it. That's my insider tip for the video. Now I should mention that even though these bolsters on the side, they did kind of hold onto the side of my foot fairly well, and the relatively small heel counter here on the back, it did feel good when I was standing still. But when I did start to run, I didn't get heel slip. I didn't have any rubbing. There was no issues with the run, but I did notice that it felt a little loose. Now this is gonna be different for each individual person. I have found recently that several shoes that I've used, I have had to do the lace lock method in order to give my heel just a little more grip. For instance, I have to do that in the Vaporfly 3. I have to do that in the Hoka Cielo Road. So even though I did get a little bit of slip, or not even slip, a little bit of looseness feeling in my heel, I didn't have to do the lace lock method in the Adios 8. And maybe it's just me, this feeling I got was just from when I'm walking around before I actually started running. When I actually got out running, that feeling of slip totally went away and that's probably because the mechanics of walking around are vastly different to the mechanics when you're actually running. Now this upper, it doesn't get much more minimal than this. This is a super lightweight mesh upper and you can probably see, yeah, you can see it on the camera. It's practically translucent. And this upper is with Adidas's micro fit pattern and it really does a good job at locking you in while staying light. In fact, just to go back to how translucent it is, the tongue, well, the tongue is very, very thin. In fact, it's almost just like a piece of felt. So if the top of your foot is very sensitive to lace bite, maybe this tongue isn't going to work for you. I actually didn't have any issue with the tongue, but I do have to warn you, this tongue is just, I don't know if I've seen a thinner tongue as this. I mean, it really is just a piece of felt, but it is fully gusseted on both sides and you can see that the tongue and the gussets are white and you can see that 
through that translucent mesh. There is also a lace loop right on the front to stop that tongue from rubbing around. And as far as overlays go, they're very minimal. We've got overlays right along the eyelet chain as we would expect. A little toe bumper coming around the front just to keep that lightweight mesh off your feet. And then just a little bit here in the back just to give a little support for that heel. Coming down to the midsole, Adidas is using two different phones and they're pretty easy to see just based on the colors. But we have Light Strike 2.0 in the back and from the midfoot all the way up to the forefoot, we have Light Strike Pro. Now the Light Strike 2.0 is their improved EVA. It's gonna be lighter, it's gonna be a lot softer so if you do tend to land on your forefoot the light strike 2.0 is going to give you a softer land and it's going to make the whole experience just a lot more comfortable light strike pro is adidas's piba blend and that's what we get in all their super shoes and it's just it's it's a very nice phone it's very responsive and it just feels good perfectly placed in the forefoot as we know when we start running a little faster we tend to land on our forefoot a little more and then that's where we toe off from and that's where we get the energy it's a good foam and i think adidas has done well with this blend of the light strike 2.0 and the pro in the forefoot come down to the outsole and there's a couple of things to point now, obviously we've got fantastic rubber coverage, a lot of continental rubber up here on the forefoot. And then when we come down to the heel, we've got these two pieces of rubber right on the outside. And that for me is where I'm going to get the most wear here on the lateral heel edge. But you know what? It's standing up pretty well. I mean, I must have run through some mud the last time I ran in this shoe, but the wear on the rubber doesn't look bad at all. And we can't talk about the bottom of the shoe without pointing out this right in the middle. This is the Energy Torsion Rod 2.0. And what they've done with the 2.0 is to add an additional fork. So right now we've got three prongs, one running up the medial side, the lateral side and then one through the middle and these energy torsion rods are going to give the ride just a little more snap look it doesn't make the shoe super rigid i'm still able to bend it and my experience with the torsion rods 2.0 was that it wasn't overpowering the way some carbon fiber plates are now this is not carbon fiber this is this is just some kind of plastic but i know a lot of you or at least i'm assuming that a lot of you get a little plate fatigue when you run it in your plated shoes too often i am exactly the same way but i think we've got to a point where these plastic plates or in this case the torsion rod 2.0 is an excellent addition just to add a little bit of stiffness add a little bit of flex and pop to our shoes especially when shoes are going to be used for workouts intervals tempo runs even race day and while we're talking about racing because i know look a lot of us like to buy super shoes a lot of these super shoes are marketed so well and we think like like if we want to run our best we have to run in a super shoe and i've seen the kind of the market shift and we're seeing a lot more shoes like this where we're taking advantage of different technologies and while the adios series was the marathon shoe before super shoes and high stack height shoes really came into favor it seems almost like it's been relegated to workouts and shorter race efforts now while i do think that super shoes with high stack heights at least for me they work better at the marathon distance i gotta tell you that i would probably feel comfortable wearing the adios 8 up to a half marathon so with that Let's talk about Ride. Now, obviously, since I have had this shoe in for testing, I haven't been able to race in it. And if I'm absolutely honest, I don't know if I'm going to race in the Adios 8, but I have taken it out for a lot of workouts. Now, when I do my workouts, I always do several miles to warm up before I get into my intervals or before I start running at tempo pace or threshold pace. And then I usually cool down for a couple miles after. So I have had a chance to run in this shoe very slowly because when I'm warming up, guys, seriously, I am running very slowly, probably up to three minutes slower than my marathon pace. And I was completely surprised that the Adios 8 felt good when I was running at those speeds. Now, look, I don't want to say it felt good the same way that a daily trainer is going to feel good when you just going out for an easy plod but it certainly didn't feel bad i got a fantastic lockdown across my midfoot and of course when i'm running slow i am definitely heel striking and this light strike 2.0 felt really good underfoot now of course all this all this running slow business is just extra the adios 8 really comes alive when you start to pick up the pace so when i was doing intervals when i was running at tempo pace the shoe just disappears on my foot and i've got to be honest that if i wasn't actually thinking about it i probably wouldn't notice the energy torsion rods doing something but obviously they are they're doing something it's just not that bash you over the head noticeable the way a carbon fiber plate sometimes can be but the funny thing is is that when i did think about it when i was running fast and i was trying to actually focus on landing more midfoot i was actually able to feel how snappy the shoe was and that i think is what i really fell in love with this shoe about because even though we only have 28 in the heel and 20 in the forefoot we think it's low but it's really not that low i found the shoe to be very protective and very cushioned and yet because of that lower stack height it keeps the weight low so it feels really just super light like a feather when you're picking up the pace oh you should also know that I absolutely love this upper. This lightweight mesh upper is perfect for where I live. Now, I live in South Florida. At the time that I am testing this, we are in the middle of summer. It is very warm all the time. Every shoe that I wear gets stuffed with newspaper at the end of my run. So some shoes, let's say some shoes with knit uppers, really put on a lot of weight while I'm running. Didn't have that problem with the Adios 8. The shoe is totally ventilated. As soon as I start running, I can feel the breeze coming into my foot, feel my feet nice and cool. Oh, 
cool-ish. So if you have problems with your feet overheating or you live in a warm area or you're going to be doing warmer races, the Adios 8 is definitely one to consider. On the flip side, if you live in a very cold place or you're going to be training for something through the winter, this may not be the best option just because it is so breathable that unless you're wearing very thick socks to keep those little tootsies warm, that you're going to start getting cold. So guys, look, it's not a daily trainer. This is a fast shoe. This is what you're going to use for your workouts and maybe your 5 or 10k races. But you know what? at slower paces, it actually felt really good. And I think that's a pretty big benefit for a lot of people out there because all of us can't buy every single shoe we need for every single type of run that we do. But if you do do speed work, maybe on a weekly basis, I think the Adidas Adios 8 is gonna fit well into your rotation and you're not gonna have to just keep it for those speed works. You could take it out on really runs where you're gonna be doing strides at the end of a run, you know, something like that. Probably wouldn't take it out for a 20 mile long run, but as I said, I think it's protective enough and definitely snappy enough that I would consider using this for a half marathon. I definitely wouldn't bulk it going for a 13 mile training run in it. Oh, one more thing before I go. This little flip up heel pull that's on the Adidas shoes, I actually used it on the Adios 8. Now remember, this, this is a race day shoe. This is a very light upper. Sometimes light uppers are a little tougher to get on and I actually found myself flipping this up and using it to pull my heel in. Anyway, it was nice to be able to use it. So guys, I wanna hear from you. Do you have a light shoe that you use for your workouts that you use for intervals? Maybe that you use for shorter distance races, maybe the 5K or 10K? First of all, I'd like to know what shoe you're using. Second of all, are you thinking about picking up a pair of the Adidas Adios 8? At $130, it's, it's definitely a good deal. And if you like to run fast, if you like to be connected to the ground, I think you'll really appreciate what the Adios 8 offers. And with that, my name's Matt B. This has been my review of the Adidas Adizero Adios 8. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.